Time for isometric object number three. Now, if you look back at the videos, you'll see that number three looks like a wedge. So to get ourselves started, we're gonna do the same thing we did for our first two images. And that is a horizontal line, nice and light. A vertical line and our two angled lines. And again, it doesn't matter what the angle is, as long as you draw two angled lines, we'll make it work. All right, so you may have noticed I've off-centered this one just a little bit because I know the object is long and it's not very deep, but that shouldn't make any difference. If you wanna do yours right in the center, it'll work just fine. So this one is going to be a wedge. So I'm gonna start this one by doing the width because looking at my front view, I know or I can see that dimension quite clearly. Now I'm going to draw the height. So at the left side of the wedge, when you're looking at it in the front view, there is a height given to you. And there it is. Now, the wedge is essentially a rectangle cut in half on the angle. So if you wanted to draw the wedge, I'm gonna just do this and explain to you how this works. So I'm gonna draw this as if it is a cube. And I'll draw this really light, and then I'm hoping this helps you visualize what's going on when you're looking at the right side view. So here are my guidelines for number three, if it was a full cube. Okay, I think you can see that. There's my right side, there's my front side, and there's my top. Now, we do know that part of that has been cut away because it is a wedge. So what I'm going to do is draw a line just a hair above that spot right there. I'm gonna draw it from there to the top corner. There we go, so that is my front view. Now I'm gonna continue on with my right side view. Now, I'm getting a little bit finicky in here in the details, but this view is something like that because there's a piece cut out and there's a little tiny squared off piece there. I don't know if you really notice it, but and that's gonna be straight up and down. So this is all I can see from the right side view. Everything else has been cut away. So the far side of the wedge comes down exactly the same as this side. So if I connect that to that, and then I connect this back edge, we're seeing what looks like a wedge. Now we have a little space left here that we're unsure about. So what I'm going to do is draw a line right down the middle of this object, keeping that alignment the same. And this is a light guideline. Oh, that's not really right down the middle, is it? Bring my eraser into play here. One of the reasons why we like nice light guidelines. There we go, that looks better. Okay. So now I have a guideline right down the middle, and what I'm going to do is pick a point, and again, we're not measuring anything, and this just happens to fall somewhere near that guideline, that's totally coincidence. So I'm gonna connect this to this. There we go. And something still looks not quite right here, so I know that at the base of this line right here, that's gonna run back along the same line as the bottom of the wedge. So I'm gonna use that bottom angle right there Put my ruler right there and draw my line right there. And that is, I'm gonna zoom in on that just a little bit for you. That is how it's going to look. All right, zoom back out and fix my image. There we go. Okay, so there we have isometric drawing number three. So I will go back to my title block. Isometric number three by Mr. Kempton. And today is still June 7th, 2020. Okay, so the only trick we had there was this little angle, this face that really wasn't there. But we took care of that by pretending to draw the cube first and then drawing in the details we could see. So there you go, isometric drawing number three.